Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and today I've got a full tank review for you of the brand new tier 10 Japanese tank destroyer. This is the Ho Re 3. This vehicle packs good frontal armor, darn good mobility for a vehicle that has such good armor and a nice pokey gun. This vehicle is a lot like a Yank Panzer E100 that shed a little bit of the weight to gain some flexibility. And in today's video, I'm gonna let you know why, while this vehicle might not be revolutionary, it's definitely something not to be ignored on the battlefield. and Maybe it'll be a good addition to your garage. So before we get stuck into the gameplay, let me show you how the Ho Re 3 stacks up compared to its likewise competition in the form of the Yank Panzer E100 and the Object 268. So firstly, what kind of a gun does the Ho Re have? Well, it has a 14.9 centimeter gun, which doesn't really mean any difference between 150 with regards to overmatching in World of Tanks. However, this 150mm, or 149mm of being pedantic, doesn't hit quite as hard as the 152mm on the Object 268, with 700 alpha damage. Now that's not awful, it'll still hit hard, but you're not quite as hard as most other tier 10 tank destroyers, but still outperforming things like the STRV-103B or the Fosh b although that thing has an autoloader. However, what it lacks in alpha damage, it more than makes up for in penetration. 305 millimeters on its standard rounds trumps even the Jag Panzer E100 and the Object 268's awesome 203. And when it comes to premium rounds, 360, now this is where it's interesting. Because it's armor piercing, this means that it's just as good, if not better, than the 375 that you'll be using on something like a T-1023 or a T-1024. However, it's debatable about whether that is going to be as competitive as the 420 high explosive anti-tank on the Yag Panzer E100 or the Object 268 395 heat. Now, over distances, the armor piercing will lose its penetration compared to the heat, and also it won't be able to go through armor that's angled between 70 and 85 degrees that's thin but still large enough about 50 to 60 millimeters it would have bounced those armor piercing rounds at least from the object 268 if it's 200 if it's 60 millimeters however i still think that the ho re 3 it's not like the recent edition of the minotauro where you're really lacking that kind of penetration so you have that full-blooded tank destroyer vibe also it carries more than enough ammunition to use the fantastic high explosive rounds on this tank 90 millimeters of pen for 900 alpha damage is great for such a, a relatively high damage per minute tank and you will change the damage per minute to being 3500 if you can make those HE rounds work. So you've got more than enough and with intuition you're going to be able to switch them out. So what's the gun handling like? Well it's really good actually for such a large caliber gun. 2.5 seconds aim time is better than the Jagdpanzer and the 268. 0.34 accuracy is right between them and good for such a large caliber gun. And the gun handling on this tank it's much better, massively better when moving than the Object 268. So you're going to be able to move, shoot, move, shoot, move, shoot. And it's also better than the Jagdpanzer E100 with that regards. However, with regards to turret traverse, while it's half that of the Jagdpanzer E100, it's not quite as good as the Object 268. Now, this vehicle doesn't have a fully traversable turret. It's able to turn its turret 10 degrees to the left and... Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, 10 degrees to the left and 10 degrees to the right, which gives it quite a lot of flexibility, but not quite as much as the 268 that has 11 degrees, but better than the Jagdpanzer, which has 6. But the thing that really shines about the Ho Re 3 is the amount of gun depression. It's similar to the Gorilla in that regard, with 7 degrees of gun depression, which makes this thing oh so flexible way better than the, the 5 degrees on the 268 and better than the 6 degrees on the Jagdpanzer E100. So it's kind of like the difference between going from a T62A to an Object 140. It's a real big advantage for the Ho Re 3 and it will allow it to be so much more flexible and also it will allow it to be able to angle its superstructure armor, which we're going to be getting onto after we talk about the mobility of this vehicle. 35 forwards, way better than the Jagdpanzer E100 and also, spoilers, this vehicle gets an excellent field mod which allows you to improve that by an additional 4 kilometers an hour. However, this vehicle, with regards to its top speed, is massively slower than the Object 268, so don't expect it to be like that, more of a mobile sniper. This is truly kind of more of a, a super heavy tank destroyer, but uh, whether it's actually heavy or not, uh, not quite, considering this vehicle weighs 65 tons. Now, that's not light. It's heavier than the 51 tons of the Object 268, but it's less than half of the Jagdpanzer E100. 
Nevertheless, I wouldn't be too afraid of ramming certain tanks in the Hori 3. And I think a lot of people will get quite a lot of surprise when they ram this thing, when they're so used to ramming grillers for ridiculous amounts. If they do ram this one, yeah, they're, they're probably going to lose a substantial amount of hit points. So the reverse speed on this tank is actually really healthy. 18 is fabulous, allowing you to pull back over round corners or allow you to pull back over ridge lines. And it also means that if you take the field mod that reduces the, t uh, the reverse speed on this tank, it, it still feels like it's pretty darn good. And so that allows you to really pump up the camera rating of this vehicle. Terrain resistance wise, in addition to the 15.24 power to weight ratio, this thing feels fast. It's it's a touch worse with regards to its ter terrain resistance as the Jagdpanzer and the Object 268, but not too much, at least uh, apart from on soft compared to the 268. The turret traverse on this tank is a great 28, and the tank traverse is 36. Now this is really where the ho Re pulls ahead of all of the other super heavily armored TDs. It even pulls ahead of the Object 268, which is meant to be one of the more nimble ones. It's quickly able to turn and to keep that frontal armor towards its opponents, and also just to engage different targets. It's fabulous and reactionary with regards to that. Now onto the armor. And I've called this thing super heavy quite a few times, and I'm not kidding. Look at this, 300 millimeters of frontal armor, 50 on the side and 35 on the rear. So what it lacks for its side and rear protection, it more makes up for from the front. Now the armor on this tank is, oh, it's kind of a little bit hit and miss in a way, because while you do get that fabulous 300 protection on the superstructure, the hull armor is pretty tragic. Uh, we're talking about 100 millimeters on the upper plate, and 120 on the lower plate, and the lower lower plate is 50, which you're probably going to be able to go through with even HE rounds if they're they're well uh, well aimed at that quite small target. And so this means that really the whole of the Hori is kind of just this big um, easy target. Apart from if you can like magically angle the tank like this, and then actually the side becomes a ricochet because do you see how the side is slanted? Which means that you can actually get away with over angling the armor on this vehicle. If you see a ho doing this to you, then make sure you shoot its tracks instead. And I do think this vehicle will end up really surprising people with how bouncy it is against low profile tanks at half decent distances. And it's just got a chance to be able to ricochet, which which is nice. Now let's talk about the, the structure of this vehicle. Look how flat it is. It's literally not angled at all, but it's 300 millimeters. This means that it's, it's going to be really hit or miss. Your opponents are either going to be able to go through it or they're not going to be able to go through it. And even if you use the seven degrees of gun depression, it barely gets any better because of course, armor piercing rounds normalize five degrees. Now it will do significantly better against heat, for example, when it's completely flat on, they'll need 300 millimeters. And when you're angling, they're going to need 310. So you can give yourself a little bit of an advantage if you're using all of your gun depression, but really, you're going to just lose your hit points against anything that has tier 10 premium rounds within this regard. And that's going to be a, a real, as I said, hit and miss thing about the Hori 3. You'll do really well against tier 8s and tier 9s that don't have great gold rounds. But as soon as you're playing against tier 9s and tier 10s that have great gold rounds, then this is just a big box of hit points that your opponents are going to take advantage of. So this tank has 2,000 hit points, not bad at all. Not quite as good as the Jagdpanzer, but better than some of the other TDs at its tier. And now onto one of the things that could easily, that you forget about, about the Ho Re 3. And that is, for some reason, actually gets really good camera rating. Compare it to the Jagdpanzer E100, it literally has four times the concealment of the Jagdpanzer. And that is without taking into account that the vehicle gets a field mod where it can increase its camera rating by 5% for lowering its top speed by 2%. Accordingly, a fully tricked out Hori 3 will have 24% concealment when it's driving around without an exhaust and 33% when it's stationary, making this way more sneaky than other large and armored tank destroyers. I'm sure we're gonna see some freaks out there using camonets or using an exhaust to be able to pump that up to nearly the 30 on the move mark, which will mean that this is quite a terrifying hard hitting tank that will be kind of having decent medium tank camo within that regard. And also one of the clear advantages of this tank is 400 meters view range, meaning that you really do not need to take coated optics on this tank when you also take into account the field mod that increases the view range by 3%. So rejoice, even if you're a free to play player, no need to waste an equipment slot on vision on this tank as soon as you have 
situational awareness and recon on your commander. So let's briefly talk about the crew on the Ho-Re 3 and thankfully none of the extra crew skills have gone into the game which makes this very simple for me and one of the reasons why I was holding back on making this tank review because we didn't know what was going to happen. Considering this tank gets a six person crew it's really easy to be able to skill up this vehicle simply get brothers in arms on all of your crew members but also remember that now brothers in arms works even on a single crew member so don't feel like you have to get it immediately get it when you feel like it's going to fit in for you and then you want to focus on things like recon on your commander you've got a dedicated radio operator so no pressure there so get situational awareness on the radio operator and then as you've got six crew members each with their own individual roles including two loaders that you're going to be able to spread your crew skills between and let me clarify i'm on my press account right now where we get all of the skills automatically assigned so don't be an idiot and only take safe stowage on one of your two loaders and take adrenaline rush on the other one but you're going to have to have intuition on both of them still all in all that makes this a really easy tank to skill up and even if you don't have access to a zero skill cruise, which I thoroughly wouldn't recommend on the radio operator or the uh, the loaders, if you are going to focus Brothers in Arms crew, I'd recommend putting them on the driver and possibly the gunner or even the commander on this vehicle. But absolutely currently until Wargaming add more crew skills and definitely not on the radio operator or the, or the loaders. Now let's talk about the equipment of the Ho-Re 3. I recommend that you use vents, a durability device and a gun rammer for one of your builds and then the other build, I'd recommend using a gun rammer, vents, and a turbo for maps where you need the speed. This allows you to have two Hori 3 builds, one for your close quarters combat maps, and the other for those more long distance maps where you need a little bit of a burst of speed. Field mods wise, you want to take reinforced suspension first. This will increase not only your track health, but also your mobility. Next up, improve the accuracy of this vehicle. Then you want to take the view range, prove that by 2%. Don't worry about the concealment after firing, it's such a uh, irrelevant thing. Then I would recommend you take the matte paints here for that extra 5% concealment to turn this thing into a very sneaky vehicle. And remember, because the, the, the reverse speed is great, you're going to have 16 or 18 reverse speed still, whether you're using that durability device or using the turbo. And then for the final field mod, I would recommend making your damage per minute worse to improve the top speed by four kilometers an hour. And while you will get a damage per minute hit, I think losing 56 DPM to be able to go literally over 10% faster in this vehicle is an absolute no-brainer. Anyway, I think that's quite enough talking. Why don't I show you how the Ho-Re 3 stacks up on the battlefield? Okay, so firstly, let's roll out into a battle on Lakeville, and I'm going to be using a regular gun rammer, regular vents, and I'm going to be using a bounty turbo in that slot. And I would thoroughly recommend using a bounty turbo on a tank destroyer. That's because the vehicle doesn't have any mobility slots, and so you don't ever have the opportunity to boost up that top speed limit. If I could take a mobility slot on this tank, I probably would rather than the durability. But by having a bounty turbo in that mobility slot, you'll have an easy access to the durability slot as well, which will improve that close quarters combat build. And just look how fast this tank is. We're going along at like 42, 43 kilometers an hour. And for a vehicle that has 300 millimeters of armor in parts on the tank, that's pretty staggering for, for this tank. This vehicle's such a weirdo, it really is. While I said at the start of the video that this thing doesn't bring anything new to the battlefield, at least with regards to mechanics, you know, it's not got the highest pen. It doesn't have the best mobility. It doesn't have the best armor. It doesn't have the best gun. It doesn't have any of these individual aspects of being outrageous. <laughs> outrageously good in any individual area. But what the vehicle does do is it blends so many, should we say, B-grade statistics into this uh, above, probably above B-grade tank. I think this thing is going to be incredibly underrated. I think that a lot of people probably aren't going to end up thinking about playing the Ho-Re 3 because, let's be honest, uh, they'll be thinking about playing the tank below me on their list, the Jagdpanzer 100 because they'll be thinking, whoa, 420 heat pen. They'll be thinking, whoa, I want to hit for a thousand damage or over a thousand damage for every single one of my shells and I want to just be German, which is absolutely fine. When I first started playing World of Tanks, I just wanted to go for all of the German tanks. Although when I first started playing World of Tanks, there were only German, Soviet, 
and American tanks in the game when I first played it in 2011, at least on the EU server. When it first came out in, in Russia, in the CIS region, the game actually didn't even have the American nation. They were added, I believe, after the first patch. Gosh, look at that aim time and that accuracy, the snapshot capacity, the gun handling on the move. We hit the T-125's lower plate there, doing 666 damage. Is, does that mean the Hori 3 is uh, confirmed as the beast? Possibly. Unfortunately, we bounce off the AMX M4 54 there. Maybe I should have fired a gold round at the tank. We're going to come around the corner now and say enough of your shenanigans, buddy. And we're going to aim like a donkey, unfortunately, and miss. So I guess more shenanigans for him, although they were quickly shut down by my team, who are frankly obviously better shots than I was in this game in the Hori 3. So unfortunately, I get hit by the 140. I get hit by the E5. But luckily, we're not going to miss that one to the top. And again, regular rounds here. It's so nice to have this kind of gun handling, but also having 305 millimeters of pen. If you think about the Gorilla, for example, I believe the Gorilla has like 279 millimeters of pen. I'm just trying to guess that off, off the top of my head there. Kind of worried about being spotted by an FV405 there. Best get forward, otherwise I'm not gonna um, not gonna take that shell well. But look, if the Gorilla, as my brain thinks, has 279 millimeters of pen, the extra 20 or over 20 that you get on this vehicle can be really nice. Just to highlight, as you can see just there, there are new notifications for when your crew skills pop. As, I, as I've said in my video, we've got all of the best aspects of the 1.20.1 update without all of the pay-to-win garbage that hopefully Wargaming are going to go away and fix and turn into an, an improved version before it goes into the game. But having this intuition notification, I guess it's nice. I guess it'll be nice for my stream viewers, uh, but I, I, I guess I kind of know that I've popped intuition. At least it'll be cool to know when you've got adrenaline rush pop, propped, so that could be quite fun. With, but then again, I guess you could just look at your hit points and see whether they are 10% of it. Woo! That was a little bit spicy. Didn't expect the FV405 to lurch around the corner there. But do you notice how the Ho-Re 3 just seems to have such good responsiveness? It's lovely like that. And there we go, our first ricochet. Of course, I'm on a test server, so everyone's firing gold rounds as if they're free. Which they kind of are, because, you know, it's the test server and whatnot. But, um... That Object 140 is not long left for this world. And I go around the corner foolishly and I tank one from the Cranvong. But it does show you that your armor will work at least occasionally against even tanks with 330 millimeters of pen as we see there. So I want to hit the side of the STB-1 there because of course I can overmatch him. And there we go, my armor working out again. Looks like it bounced off the upper hull that time, although the second shell went in rather unfortunate. And just like that, we're up to 4,000 damage and 1,800 assistance. We're going to switch out to an intuition. Uh, well, we're going to switch out to an intuition. We're going to switch out to an HE shell with intuition. Um, and then, uh, kind of got the wrong round there for the Minotaro. Kind of worried he's also going to blind fire me at this point. With 509 hit points left, that means that I'm a 50-50 whether the Minotaro kills me in a single shot. Come on, Minotaro. I should be able to shoot up in through his tracks here. But if he gives me the side of his turret there, I will take that. I still don't think that I fired any gold rounds this game. Just showing you what you can do with the regular rounds on this tank. And I have to admit, uh, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to, to playing this one on the live server. Because the test server was... On the test server, you know what I mean. It's not really exactly the fairest uh, position to be playing your tanks. So we're going to go around the corner now and see if we can be able to get a hold of this Cranvong. And hopefully right through the upper plate, right through the side there as well. This thing just hits, and that camo allows me to go around the corner. And I think, to all intents and purposes, if I went round and sat in that bush in a Yagpanzeri 100, I could be spotted. So it allows this thing to be sneaky, more like a gorilla, but like a gorilla that also has some armor to be able to ricochet occasionally, which is absolutely wonderful. And hopefully we're going to get another one here into the Kranvang and... Didn't expect that. Mr. Minotaro blind fires me. Well played, Minotaro. Great kill. Just as I was hoping that we could uh, push our total above the 7,200 uh, combined that we'd managed to hit so far. And so this battle hopefully shows you the holistic nature of the Hori 3. We had the mobility to get into position. We had the camo to work the bush. We had the gun to be able to punish our opponents. And we even had the armor to be able to bounce the occasional tier 10 gold round. And one thing that you won't, I won't be able to show in the review today, is gameplay against tier 8s and tier 9s, where I think that this armor on this vehicle is really going to shine. 
Because of course no one wants to play tier 8s or tier 9s on the test server, they just want to go and play their tier 10s and spam gold rounds. Luckily for me, my death didn't have any implications for this battle, although this Minotaur went down swinging wildly, so GG to him. And the result puts us number one on our team via experience for our 5,300 damage dealt, and because we didn't fire any gold, we made a very decent profit. <laughs> So next up we're going to be rolling out on Mountain Pass and once again I'm going to be using the turbo build on this vehicle to try and pump up the mobility as this is a map where we're going to have to travel large amounts of distances. The kind of maps that I would recommend using the durability device, you know, your Runebergs, your Himmelsdorfs, your Paris maps, and there having the extra track health and also the extra 200 hit points or more can really come in handy. All right, so a swing and a miss against the CS-63 at the start of the game. I didn't really talk about the shell velocity with this vehicle. And I have to admit, looking at it now, at least on the standard rounds, it's one of the more disappointing things about the vehicle. 980 means that you're not going to have the accuracy or the ease that the Gorilla does, as I believe the Gorilla has 1,200 meters a second shell velocity. However, for all of you pay-to-win players out there, there's nothing holding you back from damming the two key paying a substantial amount extra per shot but having 1150 meters a second shell velocity which will help you to be able to get those snipey shots out. So with the Ho Re you can kind of take the tank anywhere on the map. I think the vehicle will do best almost trying to fight the heavy flanks or maybe in in situations like this any kind of bush and ridge line. Any kind of bush and ridge line should be your goal for something like the Hori 3. Because it's got that really nice camo, as I suggested, on the on the move. You're gonna have about 23-24% camo if you set the thing up correctly with a good crew. Because that allows you to be quite sneaky, your opponents might not spot you until you fired, and it just really feels like this great counter puncher. I also really like the rate of fire on this vehicle. The rate of fire naturally works with the 10 second spotting time, at least as long as your opponents don't have designated target, which means that you can easily pull back around the corner, get hidden, and then go back up and fire another shot when you are no longer spotted. And so, yeah, with the kind of gun ram events build on this vehicle, you kind of get the reload down to about 12 seconds on the tank. From that perspective, it's absolutely lovely. And having this big gun, this 149mm, and while you can't overmatch 50mm plates like an Object 268 can, you can be able to overmatch, you know, up to those those 40mm plates. It's up to 45mm plates. In fact, you're going to be able to overmatch everything like a 49mm plate on this tank. And that can be a tremendous advantage against certain vehicles, engine decks, lower plates, or just when you want to be able to absolutely club your way through your opponents. And look how flexible this tank is. Seven degrees of gun depression is wonderful to use in this position. And I think this thing is going to be really fearsome. I think it's going to have some outrageous results. For when a gorilla just doesn't have the armor to be able to sustain itself, or it doesn't have kind of the extra camera rating like the, the, the Ho Re 3 has. Or for, because for example, for me to be able to get the same kind of camo on a Gorilla that I have on a Hori 3, I have to use an exhaust on this tank, whereas this tank doesn't have to worry about that. So it's going to have that armor to be able to bludgeon its way through tier 8s and tier 9s. It's going to have the camo to be able to use bushes, which seems absolutely bizarre compared to a Gorilla. But then again, when we look at it compared to an SW1 there, it doesn't even look that, uh, it doesn't even look that tall. And when you bounce those shells against a CS-63 in that scenario, which you're pretty much going to bounce all of the regular rounds against the superstructure of this vehicle, you have to load gold to be able to go through my superstructure. And let's be honest, that's what's going to happen. When everybody knows what's happening with this vehicle, that is what is going to happen. Wow, look at that. The actual recon thing shows when it's working while your observation device is damaged. That's quite impressive. Um, but as I was saying, that is more or less what's going to happen. Look at the top of my screen. They're going to bounce the regular round, they're going to dab the two key, and then they're going to pen all of their gold rounds. This tank is almost the great divider where it will bounce all regular rounds, but it's going to get penned by all premium rounds. And so if you do see these things on the battlefield, fire gold at them And if you're in your tier 9 and tier 10 tanks. And you're going to change them from being something to be feared to frankly just being a big EXP piñata for you.
So, so far, we have managed to pick up two kills in this game and do 5,700 damage in four and a half minutes. It's looking quite tense, though, as we are down by... Uh, we're outnumbered, well, rather significantly. <laughs> We've got two tanks left against nine on uh, the opponents. But let's just see how well we can go down kicking and screaming in this scenario. The Leopard bounces a gold round off the front of our vehicle. I'm trying to get around the corner. I'm just going to auto-aim this shell, un-auto-aim. And oh, no, I actually bounced off a Leopard. The humanity. Oh, if I'd managed to be able to to, um, to catch that leopard there, then I could have turned around and dealt with all the people who are going to be behind me. So I'm going to have to commit deeper. And I'm not sure if, it, if they weren't spotting me. Look at that. My sixth sense just went off. I actually outsnuck the, the bat chat there. Unfortunately, there's a Minotauro smashing me from above. Hopefully going to be able to find the CS-63. Didn't quite have the reload. Didn't aim particularly wonderfully there against the bat chat, but I'm feeling like this shell is going to be my last, so I want to make sure it counts. There we go. Right into the lower play, the CS-63, picking up four kills, now over 7,200 damage. And I'm going to angle my armor in here as much as I can to be able to hopefully ricochet anything. Unfortunately, the Manticore is going to get me. STRV gold round. Finish off the STRV as well, 7,600 damage and five kills, managing to do more than the rest of my team combined. Hopefully this shows you that the Hori is just so darn flexible. I really want to highlight that now as well, if I go back to not being huge on the screen, we bounced 1,590 damage there. And this is against tier 10 tanks that are mostly firing gold rounds, uh, apart from the Batchat and the CS-63 who fired a couple of regular rounds at me. And you don't actually have to have a vivid imagination to think about how 300 millimeters of armor is going to work against tier 8s and tier 9s. With a responsive gun and the correct setup, with the field mod that increases the top speed limit by four and a turbo. This thing is going to go from being like a sluggish Jagdpanzer E100 that I personally don't take a gun rammer on the Jagdpanzer E100 because I want to be able to pump up that mobility and pump up the durability that this vehicle, on the other hand, definitely probably wants to use like vents and a gun rammer and get going because it's not investing all of its damage in one shot, which means that it it comes up trumps with regards to damage per minute as well. Accordingly, I do expect that the Hori 3 is going to be this kind of hidden gem. At least for now, I might have made it a little bit more popular than it probably was going to be. As, let's be honest, not many people play down, should we say, the least popular nation's tanks, as they don't really have the soul of a Jagdpanzer E100. As I said, it doesn't have those flashy stats, it doesn't have that big gun, it doesn't have that high alpha damage, it doesn't have that 420 millimeters of heat pen. But this thing has so many good, if not great, statistics across the board with hardly any weaknesses that this thing is going to be a great, well-rounded tank destroyer that, as I said, it doesn't add anything new to the game, but it adds enough statistics that are strong that I do expect that this thing is going to become one of the more dominant tank destroyers in a good player's hands. And I think it'll be very interesting to see what kind of an impact it has on the live server because there was a time when the Griller was considered to be overpowered and so War Gaming nerfed it. They nerfed its gun depression a little bit and they nerfed its gun handling and I believe its rate of fire as well. And one could argue with enough statistics that just seem to be above and beyond what the Griller is capable of, especially with regards to premium penetration. I think the Hori 3's lack of popularity, because it's not German, will probably be a saving grace. Because if it was, I think it would get far too popular and probably end up toxic in the matchmaker. And we all know what happened to the Brigetto 65, right? So all in all, is it worth racing your way up the Japanese tech tree to be able to get the Hori 3? Well, yes and no. As I said, it doesn't bring anything new. It's not gonna do anything different. But if you're looking for a well-rounded tank destroyer that will excel in the hands of an experienced player, I think the Hori 3 is a very interesting prospect. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and it was useful, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know what you think about the Hori 3 in the comments down below. Do you think it looks absolutely incredible or do you think that it looks absolutely terrible? And will you be trying to grind to be able to get yourself one as well and yeah all in all just enjoy the new patch 1.20.1 is here and i'm going to be testing it all out myself over the upcoming weeks so stay tuned to the channel as i have a bunch of videos coming up also i should try and get a ts54 tank review out for you tomorrow if you're holding off on purchasing what plus and as always thank you so much for watching you've been epic and hopefully i'll see you soon